Hi everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make a very easy kid-friendly meal. We're going to make a cheeseburger soup. To go alongside that we're going to make some garlic monkey bread and some gooey brownies. And we're actually going to get started on the brownies because they need to bake quite a while and then cool before we can eat them. So in this pan I have about a cup and a half or so. I'm just using the little mini chocolate chips, but you could use whatever kind of, you know, if you want to chop chocolate, whatever you want to do there. But I'm using the mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to add one can of sweetened condensed milk. Now this you find in the baking aisle beside the evaporated milk. Now make sure that you get sweetened condensed milk and not evaporated milk, two very, very different items. So we want to get all that delicious evaporated milk out of here. Mm, I love brownies. I love warm brownies especially. What we're going to do is over like a medium heat, this will go very quickly, we are going to melt that chocolate in with the, let me move that pan there, in with the sweetened condensed milk. And see that's already almost melted, the chocolate chips are. You don't want to walk away from this because you are work. we're not using a double boiler here. We are just using the heat of the stove. Now when that is melted, or almost melted, as you can see, it's very, very gooey and liquidy, mm, so good. We want to drop in two cups of butter. We're going to melt that butter right into the chocolate. Let me just put all that in there. I'll go ahead and kind of cut my butter up. And I prefer unsalted butter. And I use real butter. I don't like the margarine. And really in, in baking, you don't want to use margarine. You want to use butter. Reason is, um, Margarine has a very high water content and it will totally change the structure as well as the flavor of your butter. I just prefer butter. What I do is when it's on sale, um, I buy it up and then I put it in the freezer and it'll keep, you know, for months, like six or eight months in your freezer. And then when you need it, just take out a package of it. I have butter in my freezer pretty much at all times because I really, I just like butter, just, just do, all kinds. But now I normally do buy unsalted butter. So that's going beautifully. I'm going to let that, oh, looks so good. I have a couple of cups of, I'm using dark brown sugar because that's what I had today. But if you have light brown sugar, that's fine too. Dark brown sugar just has a little bit more molasses in it, um, and it's a little bit of a deeper flavor, but you can use either one. I just did not have any light brown sugar, and they are interchangeable in most recipes. The flavor's a little different, but it, it doesn't matter. So I'm just using dark brown. Okay, that butter is almost melted, so I'm gonna turn the heat off, and I'm gonna bring it up here. And I'm actually going to stir in, while it's still warm, the sugar, the brown sugar. Get that in here. This is not a non-stick pan. This is one of those hard anodized pots. I love these things. The only non-stick cooker, when I get asked this a lot, um, I like a non-stick skillet for some things, but for everything else, I like either just regular stainless steel or um, the hard anodized. Put that there for a minute. I'm going to actually switch to a whisk. And again, this is not non-stick, so I can use a metal whisk in here. And I'm going to whisk that together. Mmm. 
see it's just all melting together. Now these are gooey brownies. These are meant to be soft and oh, gooey and they're delicious served with some vanilla ice cream or on their own. And honestly, is there any dessert? Very few desserts. You know, I don't know. I think so. I don't know. A warm brownie from the oven. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know of very many things that taste better than that. I am going to add a little bit of vanilla, about a teaspoon or two, however much that you want. Mm, I love vanilla. If you ever find Mexican vanilla, try that too. Oh, it's really good. Now, I have two eggs here. I'm actually just going to crack them in this bowl. I like to kind of beat my eggs a little bit with a fork before I add it to that. You want to make sure that cools just a little bit. You can temper your eggs if you want to. You don't want to put that in the hot. If you do, you're going to have scrambled eggs, and you don't want that. Get that off of there. I'm going to switch back to my whisk. A good way, or my spatula, a good way to incorporate that into the chocolate without scrambling your eggs or any hot liquid. This goes for anything that you are going to be adding eggs to. Take a little bit of the hot mixture, just a little bit, and put that in with the egg, and that kind of tempers the eggs a little bit to where they don't scramble. And then you can stir your egg in with your other mixture. Get all that out of there. Ooh, so good. Stir that together. And then here I have two cups of all-purpose flour. Mm. I'm going to add my chocolate sugar deliciousness to my flour. Stir that together. I have about a teaspoon of salt in that flour mixture. And this is one you just need your muscles. You just want to incorporate all that flour. And I have a, a pan that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to add some nuts to mine because I like nuts in my brownies. If you don't like nuts in the brownies, you don't have to add any. I'm adding about three quarters of a cup of just chopped pecans. You only want to stir this until you really don't have any raw flour. Don't over mix it because then you're going to have tough brownies. All right, that's it. We're going to pour this into our baking dish. 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes and then you take that out of the oven and you just spread it out. It's okay if you have just a couple of little specks of raw flour, that's perfectly fine. Grab a little knife here. I'm just gonna pop this in the oven, clean my bowl, get my bowls in the sink. When I come back, we're gonna get started on the soup and the monkey bread. I'm just gonna pop that in the oven uncovered for about 30 minutes or so and I'll show you how to check it. I'll be back in just a minute. All righty, now our brownies are in the oven and we're going to get started on our cheeseburger soup. In this pot, I have a pound of just lean ground beef that I'm going to be browning up. Just got that over medium high heat. Just want to brown it. Now I am using leaner beef here because I don't want to drain out the grease and all that stuff. I want a little bit of fat, but not too, too much. Where'd my, huh, don't know where the, my spoon wrists went. Oh well, just put it right there. 
and I'm gonna use my little handy dandy when that starts browning up a little more. This is just a, a ground beef <laughs> messer upper. I don't really know the technical name for this, but this is just a beef crumbler. You put it in there as you're cooking. You know how sometimes if you don't separate it out real good, stays in a clump, this separates the little individual things. But I'm gonna let it go just a second. Now I have here just a couple of onions little smaller onions, so I'm going to, I don't know, I'll see how much this ends up being. I like to cut, it, cut them in half to give yourself a flat surface to work on. I'm using little cooking yellow onions. You can use a white onion if you want or a Vidalia or whatever you want. You could even use a red onion. If you don't have onion, you could use onion powder or granulated onion, but onions should be a staple for you. And I want to cut it into like medium, smallish dice. Sharp knife, big cutting board, very important. There's a thousand and one different ways of how to cut up an onion. I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and put the onion in there because that's very lean as that's browning. So I'm not going to be draining the liquid. If you're using a fatty or cut where you're actually going to be draining the fat, then don't put your onion in until you're done. I'm going to use both of these because you don't want to lose that flavor from the onion. I cut it in half. I cut the top and the bottom, then cut it in half and peel off that very outer layer of the onion. You can compost that if you compost. I don't, but you can. I like to work on a flat surface, it's safer. And then cut your onion into smaller pieces. Onion and celery are the basis of a lot of soups. Okay, my little bench scraper, great little tool, perfect little tool to have in the kitchen. I have so many people ask me about that. Okay, I'm going to stir those onions in. And now swear you want to get in there with this little thing and just twist it in there, push, push it down in the beef, and it really does separate that beef into smaller pieces. Okay, let me turn that up just a little bit. Okay, let that brown. I'm going to cut up my celery. I really like celery. So I'm going to put uh, the equivalent of probably two stalks because these are smaller. I don't want the leaves in this particular recipe. Just cut up your celery into bite-sized pieces. Celery is actually one of my favorite vegetables. I think it's one of those you either really love it or you really hate it, but I really love it. Fingers bent back and just cut it into about the same size as the onion. This is a cheeseburger soup that's really, really good. Add that to your pot. That's why I like to work beside my stove. And you just add as you go. Beef, brown that, break that up, that's about good. Let that cook away for just a few minutes. So while that's browning, let's get started on our biscuits. I have my oven, bottom oven, preheated to 375 degrees. We're just gonna use canned biscuits. So easy. I need to melt my butter. I have here about half a stick or so of butter. I'm going to just melt that. In here I have some very finely grated Parmesan cheese and I'm adding some garlic powder. That's not salt. And I'm going to add just a pinch of salt. Just a little bit. Stir that together. 
Now I'm using a bunt pan that I'm actually going to spray with nonstick spray. Just set that to the side for a minute. Don't forget your soup. Just letting those vegetables sweat and that beef to cook to where all the pink is gone. Take your biscuits. Cut them, take them out of your package. I mean, this really could not be simpler. Take a knife, a little paring knife, and cut it into quarters, just like that. I like the southern style. I would not use the flaky in this recipe. I would use the buttermilk or the southern style, but not flaky for this. I hear you microwave. My microwave's talking to me saying, hey, I'm done. I'm done cooking your butter or melting your butter. Don't forget me. Okay. Let's check our butter. Should be melted. Close enough. That's fine, just for a second here. Finish my biscuits. Now, what you're gonna do is put the butter into that cheese mixture. Stirring that together. We're gonna take our biscuits Dip it in that garlic butter mixture and put them in the bottom of that pan. I've got two packages of the biscuits. Okay, I'm just gonna keep doing this very thing. Do it with the other package of biscuits. Stir that, I'm gonna take a quick break. When I come back, we're gonna get these finished, get them in the oven and finish up our soup. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, now all I did was take that second can of biscuits and repeat the same process. When it's done, this is what it will look like. If you have any of the cheesy garlic mixture left over, don't waste that, just put it on top. 375, about 20 to 25 minutes or until the biscuits are done. Okay, I need to move a rack here. That's not tall enough. About middle of the oven. Let's, let's look at our brownies while we're back here. Oh yeah, those are looking good. They're not done, but they look good. Okay, our soup. Now, I just took it off the heat for a second. I have my celery and onion and beef in there. Now, if you have a bouillon cube, you can use a couple of bouillon cubes dissolved in water or you can just use beef stock, which is what I had on hand. A couple of cups or so. I'm just using two cans. Add that. I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit now to like medium. And now I have here, just I've scrubbed these so I don't peel. If you don't like to have the peel, then you can peel them. I just really like the flavor and the look. I'm using little red potatoes, but you could use any kind of a potato that you want. I want them into 
I'd say half inch cubes probably. And we're going to put those in the soup and let them cook as we go. I want about two pounds or so. That one needs some trimming. So I cut them in half, then cut them in half again. I just use a little paring knife for this. You want little smaller cubes. And these need to cook for about 20 minutes. I'm going to just add all these potatoes. If you need to add some more water to cover, go right ahead. You don't want it to be soupy because we're going to make a roux and um, thicken it up with a roux and some cheese here in a little bit. So don't add too much. But you might need to add maybe a cup more water. I'm just going to get these cubed up and get them in the soup. Alrighty, now our brownies are done. I'm going to show you how to test those in just a second. Our soup has simmered and the potatoes are tender. So we're going to make a roux. I've got three tablespoons of flour, just all purpose flour, and about half a cup or so of milk that I'm going to, I don't know why I got that little fork because I don't like that. I like my little whisk. You just want to stir the flour completely, no lumps, into the milk, okay? And then stir it into the soup. All right. Then we're going to take about... Uh, a cup or so of cheddar cheese, as much as you want. And we're going to stir that into our soup because remember, this is cheddar or a cheeseburger soup. And I think we need a little more cheese. So I'm going to grab a little more cheese because I like a lot of cheese in my soup. I'm not one normally that likes a lot of cheese in soups but this particular one needs it. This is just shredded cheddar that doesn't want to open for me. So you know what we're going to do? I'm going to cut it open. Eh, just add the rest of it. So that'll be about two cups. As much as you like. Ho, 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 ho. If you want to thin it down a little bit, you could add just a little bit of milk. I don't, just add some richness or you could use heavy cream. Now, let's add some salt and pepper. Got a little bit still of my ground pepper left that I ground. I never buy that pre-ground stuff. I just take whole pepper corns and grind them. You've seen me do that. Never buy that pre-ground stuff. It has no flavor. Once you try freshly ground pepper, you will never want that stuff again. I promise you. You always need to taste your food for seasoning. So let me just taste this to see if it needs any more salt. That's done. That is so, so, so good. Now, let me show you how to test your brownies. Now remember, these are gooey brownies. So we want to take a toothpick, insert it in the center, and you see it comes out with just a little bit of melted chocolate on it, but that's okay. You just don't want to have a whole lot. Those are done. I would serve those with either... Um, on their own or with some vanilla ice cream. And if I had some vanilla ice cream, I would totally be eating that with it. But I don't have any vanilla ice cream. Let's check our monkey bread. I think it's probably done. Wipe up my mess here. Okay, let's get our monkey bread out of the oven. 
<laughs> Wait till you see this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. There is your delicious garlic monkey bread. Now, that needs to cool for just a minute and then we will turn it out onto a plate. Let's get some of our soup. All right, look at this. Oh my word. If that's not comfort in a bowl, I don't know what is. And I'll just tell you, it's a very good, very inexpensive meal using ingredients that you probably have in your home right now. So there is our delicious. You could top that with a little more cheese if you wanted or with a little bit of, I have a little bit of parsley, so let's just add a little tiny bit of parsley. You don't have to do this. I just think it looks prettier. Ooh, I about touched that. I don't want to do that. So I have just some parsley here that I'm going to chop up. Adds a little flavor and a little color. If you're a fan of cheeseburgers, you're going to love that soup. It really is good. And you could totally make that in your crock pot or your instant pot. Would be simple. Okay, sprinkle a little bit of that over top of our soup. Now, our monkey bread. Oh, ho, ho. Tell you what, let's do first. Let's cut into those brownies. Let me find a knife. Oh, I love a warm brownie. You know, and it really wouldn't be fair of me to serve this to my guests without tasting it first. You know, I, it, it's just, that would not be right. This has been cooling for about 10 minutes or so. Oh, yum. Now, let's find a little somewhere. I have little spatulas, but I don't know where they are. Here's one. This will work. Little tiny thing. The first piece is always the hardest. Oh, my goodness. I want you to see inside. Can you see inside that? You see how that's gooey? That's why they're called gooey brownies. It's because that inside is nice and gooey and just chocolatey and fudgy and so delicious. You could sprinkle these with some uh, powdered sugar if you wanted to. To me, doesn't need a thing. There you go. Here is our delicious monkey bread. Let that cool for about five minutes or so. Turn it over or just serve it right out of here however you want to do it. Our delicious cheeseburger soup, our garlic monkey bread, and our gooey brownies. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.